From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, a Ben J. Shap LLC production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome back to Privacy Week on the MarTech Podcast. This week, we're doing a deep dive into a subject matter that's critically important to marketers in every industry, business, and channel of marketing, privacy. For those of you who are just joining us today, each week, we're going to publish an episode that covers how to stay out of trouble by learning the rules of online privacy. Joining us for Privacy Week is Casey Chappelle, who is a privacy advocate and the data protection officer for GoCardless. Casey has worked as part of the in-house counsel for large enterprises, including eBay, Vodafone, and American Express Global Business Travel. She has a wealth of information related to privacy, and we're very excited to have her here. So far this week, Casey has walked us through an overview of some of the basic rules of privacy, some of what GDPR means, and a little bit about data capture. And today, we're going to turn our attention to the rules for privacy related to email marketing. Here's the third installment of our interview with Casey Chappelle from Go Cardless. Casey, it's midweek. Welcome back to Privacy Week on the MarTech Podcast. Thank you, Ben. We're halfway home, and today I want to focus on a topic that's very important in terms of new user generation, in terms of retention, driving revenue. It's critically important to marketers, email marketing. Let me ask you, we talked a little bit about where you can capture your data, how you can capture what you can capture it. What are the basic rules for using data to reach customers and what consent do you have to have to send emails to someone? Oh, email consent. As an EU resident, I can tell you that my inbox has been overwhelmed over the last couple of months with emails from companies saying, hey, GDPR means that we need you to confirm your consent. That's not true. It hasn't changed. But email marketing rules are tricky. They're very specific to different locations. If you're in the U.S., You have to comply with the can spam law. If you're in the EU, there's something called the e-privacy directive that affects you. In Australia, there's the very, very strict spam act. And email marketers should be aware of the implications of these very rigid, very specific laws that apply almost anywhere they could operate. Is there a universal definition of spam? Well, I guess you could say that spam is an unsolicited commercial message. There's a distinction in most laws, Australia is an exception, I'll get into that in a second, in most laws between service messages and marketing messages. If you're sending a service message, if you're sending something that you're communicating to somebody because they have bought something from you and you need to send an invoice or an itinerary or some sort of a confirmation of an activity, it's not spam. It's not unsolicited. You have a relationship with that person. It's not marketing. You're not promoting a product or service. And usually spam laws won't apply to that. Okay. Now, Australia doesn't have that distinction. They just say that all commercial messages are regulated. So it's a little stricter when you think about essential service messages versus non-essential service messages. But let's focus on marketing. You know it's a marketing message because it's promoting a good or service, right? You're trying to get somebody to take some kind of an action that's unrelated to a service that you're already providing to them. So that's the first question. Do you have a marketing email? Second question then is, is it unsolicited? Do you already have a relationship with this person? In the US, for example, that would be called an existing business relationship. And the rules say that you don't need express consent to market to those people. In the EU, there's something called the soft opt-in under the e-privacy directive and soon to be the e-privacy regulation that says that you can communicate with people that you already have a business relationship with until they tell you not to. 
there are some qualifications of that, right? In the EU, you have to give them the upfront choice to tell you not to communicate to them at the point where you create the business relationship with them. That's why when you check out, say, in an e-commerce flow in the EU, you'll see the little box at the end that says, we'd like to continue to communicate with you about related products or services. Tick here to tell us not to or something like that. Now, GDPR has some new rules around consent. If you're relying on consent, we talked in the last section about when you do need to rely on consent, there are other justifications for processing. But where you do need to rely on consent, because you don't have an existing business relationship, you're trying to reach out to somebody new for something new, then GDPR says that consent has to be specific. It needs to be informed. It needs to be unbundled from other disclosures. So it couldn't be, for example, you can't require somebody to tick the box and give you consent or they can't do the thing that they're trying to do. You can't bury it in your privacy policy. Exactly. That's why you are more often now seeing those separate tick boxes in the checkout flow. There's a distinction to me between marketing emails and sales specific emails, right? The cold email. The unofficial line in the sand from marketers that I've heard and talked to, and maybe even have been one of them, is when you are sending a one-to-many email, everyone that you're sending it to needs to have given you consent. So if I have a newsletter, someone has to have subscribed to the newsletter for me to reach out. But the sales team can send one-off emails from their personal accounts using the same domain and not be breaking the law. Is that true? I mean, I've worked at a handful of B2B clients and their sales teams do lead generation. They go through LinkedIn, they scrape people's email addresses and they reach out to them personally. What's the rule related to -to one-to-one email outreach? There's another word that you use there that I think draws an important distinction there and that's B2B. So B2C is different. And most marketing in the B2C space is going to be the email blast because you're not going to reach out individually to individual consumers. But B2B marketing can be more targeted, more tailored, and more specific in that way. You are generating a relationship with an individual. B2B marketing, here in the UK at least, is treated differently from B2C marketing. In a lot of cases, you can rely on the legitimate interest assessment. Remember, we talked about those justifications for processing. Mm -hmm. So the legitimate interest justification says that you can communicate with somebody, you can use their data, you can reach out to them to create a sales relationship because you as the B2B marketer have a legitimate interest in doing that. And because what we're talking about is B2B, because it's an individual outreach to somebody in a business context and not in a personal context, then when you do that balancing test against their right to not be reached out to, then that balancing test falls on your side of the equation. What's interesting to me is essentially when you're at work, there is less protections for you in terms of email marketing. It's more legal, if that's a phrase I can use, for someone to send you an unsolicited email because it's going to a work inbox which is just interesting to me. The other thing that I guess I want to ask you about is with the increase in marketing automation, I'm seeing more personalized outreach on the consumer side. For example, I sign up for a service where I buy a product and I get an email that looks like it's from the company's founder. Now, in reality, it's an automated message that can be sent to everybody. My question is, does it matter if it is from a general inbox or from a personalized inbox related to what the privacy rules are? It doesn't actually matter. If that email is being sent to somebody who has engaged in your services in the past, then you can rely on the existing business relationship exception. You can rely on the soft opt-in, which means that you don't have to have the explicit consent of the recipient to send that message, regardless of whether it came from a personalized email account of the founder or not, quote unquote. The distinction here isn't related to who sends the message, it's related to the context in which it was sent. What I'm hearing from you is that there is less protection of your inbox when you are at work. And the expectation is that it's okay for someone to send unsolicited emails to you as long as they have a business purpose, meaning that they are trying to sell you something. That's actually not can spam. On the flip side, if a sibling sends a personal email to your personal inbox trying to sell you something, that's more likely to be crossing the line. So you do need more protections 
to sell to consumers than you do in B2B. Is that fair? Although I'm thinking about this because obviously I've been living in the UK for 10 years. So a lot of the advice that I've been giving most recently has been about how this works in the UK regulatory context. I don't know that the FTC's rules actually have that B2B versus B2C distinction. It seems like there's an awful lot of gray area. (laughs) And this is the frustration for marketers in terms of what is can spam is that the laws are not 100% clear with the distinction between what I'll call sales marketing and email marketing. So I'm looking at this here, and it does say that under the Can Spam Act, you can send emails to business people. So Can Spam is really around consumers. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily that your business inbox doesn't have as many legal protections around it. Because remember, Can Spam isn't just about that initial consent. It's also about not being misleading. It's about making sure that you can unsubscribe. What spam laws around the world do in a B2B context is they recognize that businesses have a need to market to other businesses or they'd go out of business. Absolutely. So the good news is that the unsolicited but personalized emails from the sales team doing lead generation, trying to generate new interest, those are actually fair game in terms of spam laws. But on the flip side, you absolutely need to have consent when you're sending your mass marketing bulk emails, no matter how personalized they are. I think that's a good stopping point for today's episode. So that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks to Casey for joining us. We're going to publish an episode every day this week. We're halfway to the finish line. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and check back with us tomorrow morning when we'll be discussing the rules for online advertising. If you can't wait until our next episode and you'd like to learn more about Casey and GoCardless, click on the link in our show notes to her bio or go to gocardless.com. If you're a subscriber to the MarTech Podcast, we want to thank you for being a member of our community. If you have questions, comments, if you'd like to make suggestions on topics we should cover, we have a link to the Contact Us page in our show notes. You can also find links to our social media pages, or you can just look for Ben J. Shap, B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P, in whatever social network you're on. If you haven't subscribed yet and you want a weekly stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, in addition to the rest of Privacy Week with Casey Chappelle from Go Cardless, we've got a bunch of great episodes lined up for the next few weeks. So hit that subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. Okay, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy.